final topic today. Uh, and that is uh, the Flash movie. This movie is getting... This movie comes out in 77 years. <laughs> but every day there's something new to talk about, whether it's Ezra, Ezra Miller... But what timeline are we talking about? I mean, 77 years could be tomorrow. You know, you know, no one really yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, with Warner Brothers, you never know. Oh, um, Ezra oh. Miller is having issues, obviously. Everyone knows that. New, new, Actually, new reports are coming up that they are now again rethinking of replacing Ezra Miller in The Flash somehow... So I don't know if you guys know, but we did, you talked about it, Scotty. We talked about it a bit, and then we talked about it again about how Rolling Stone had an article, and then and then somebody from the from Warner Brothers disputed that and said, "No, that's not the case." But now it's looking like it might be the case. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with Ezra Miller. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Flash movie itself, and the leaks are like every day. There's new leaks for this from test screenings, which. You know, you report on one and then you hear, oh, no, that's all bogus. And then new reports come on. They're like, that's kind of true, but not really. And I think a lot of the leaks that are coming out are really just educated guesses on what this movie is. Because it's only going to be about a few things and everybody kind of figures that out. But now on uh, Twitter, uh, My Time to Shine Hello has kind of indicated that um, <clears throat> at the end of the Flash movie, it will be confirmed that Henry Cavill, that Superman, is no longer a part of the DC E you, I don't. I think. Look, I think it's dumb. I think Supergirl's fine, but Supergirl and Superman could coexist, no problem. I think Superman is Superman, and the fact that you don't want to utilize Superman because Henry Cavill's contract is too big, or because your egos are bruised, or whatever. I don't know. It, to me, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now, in the movie, it might work. Like what they're doing in the movie, it might work for that one isolated film. But on the grand scheme, Scotty, I just don't understand why you wouldn't want Superman around. Yeah, I think they're going to end up moving to a different universe altogether so that they can avoid the Henry Cavill uh, Superman contract issues or whatever. But I think like with this kind of stuff and the fact that there are multiple universes, stuff like this could come back around. You know, this merger with the companies and the shakeup. I don't know. I still hold out hope for even Snyderverse type stuff because it's a billion dollars. Like these guys are not going to just be like, ah, nah, we don't want Henry Cavill back. You know, let him go do the Witcher, get all that stuff done. I think even a Tony Stark could come back. Uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Many, many years down the road, Secret Wars. We just see him in the distance sitting at the table with his kid in another universe. You know what I mean? So. Who knows? I really can't speculate with Warner Brothers because you don't know what direction they want to put all their money into. That's the thing a lot of people are saying, like the mergers happen and everything, and they're all mm -hmm. putting money, stock in that. And it's like, yeah, but you can't, like they can't just come in and change everything right now. Like Flash has been shot, Aquaman's been shot, Black Adam's been shot, Shazam Two has been shot, Wonder Woman's in pre-production now. Like all these, they're not just gonna pull these movies and be like, we're gonna make these now. So, I, I mean, I don't know how it affects any of those, but, it, you know, Steve, you, you think they might. But what do, you, what do you think, Steve, of getting rid of Superman? Wouldn't surprise me in the least if, <laughs> if they did that, because, again, it's DC, and if I don't have that ticket, it's not happening yet. Because I just... <sighs> I, I'm, I'm I'm having such a hard time keeping track of all the Flash stuff at this point, and I'm starting to not yep. care. You know, yep. when the talks of the Flash movie was out, my son his favorite character was the flash. He loved the flash and it's been so long without a flash movie, without anything. He doesn't care anymore about flash. He really doesn't. Nope. He's, he's, he's all in on Marvel at this point because Marvel's still producing Marvel's still pumping this stuff out. And go. no, I was going to say, you just said the thing that Marvel does better than anybody. And that's the thing is like, if a Marvel movie comes out and it's okay, it doesn't matter because the next one's coming up in two months. And you're going to not care about the one you just saw because the next one's coming. And they're always in the forefront of your mind. Doctor Strange is coming out. If it underwhelms you, who gives a crap? Thor's coming yeah, out next. Thor, yep. If Thor disappoints you, who cares? Black Panther's coming out. Who cares? A-Man's coming out. Oh, by the way, on TV, you're going to get a look. They're just always moving. And that, for me, as like individual films, I find that weakens the movies themselves a little bit. And that their rewatchability quality. Not for little kids. Time out for adults. Stop it. But like, you're like, whereas the quality is what it is because they're like, get one step, go, keep going, keep going. But it's genius because it 
it's it's TV, right? It's like weekly. It's like, well, we got you hooked and we're not going to let you get cigarettes, right? You get hooked on cigarettes, that nicotine's keeping you around for a long time. That's what the MCU is. They've hooked your kids and your kids are going to keep going and going and going. And the thing is, they're not kids' movies. They're barely adult movies, but they're for all ages. So they get you when you're young. They're going to get you when you're older. And DC, for some reason, is like, nah, yeah, I it like oh Batman and Superman didn't do what you wanted to do just throw Justice League and then throw Wonder Woman I just keep them coming and they're having a really hard time doing that oh, lack well, of direction I think it's yeah well Don't that's have a like Kevin Feige figurehead on the show yeah like I was saying earlier like Fe- like MCU might not have a plan but Feige's smart enough a good enough puppeteer to mm-hmm. direct these things in the direction that they need to go to make sense and feel like 10 years ago, they thought about Shang-Chi. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like oh no, they were playing yeah. that right. No, they weren't. They thought, they thought it was like a month before they cast them. Like, mm-hmm. but it's like, but you feel like it's all natural. It's all part of this process. And, and that's the genius of it. And they might get that now with the merge. Like things are, you know, it's a little bit of a different corporate mm-hmm. landscape than it was even two months ago. But like to your point earlier, you know, don't sacrifice what you have on deck for what's way off in the future, right? Because you got all those movies that are in in development and supposedly coming out, and we don't know where they stand. So I'm just, Daisy. I know. I wish some companies would just have the like, I don't know what it is, the bravery or like whatever to just say, okay, here here's like a new slate. This is the new direction. We're actually gonna move away from some of the CW stuff. We're gonna now shift it into HBO Max. Make it a little more gritty, you know, the Batwoman stuff, etc. Mm-hmm. And then, like, touch on, they don't even have to say they're going to. They can just say, hey, all of these timelines are something that we're looking at. But, like, with a merger and big things like this and all of the public drama on Twitter, yeah. like, that's all we have to base yeah. on yeah. what's happening actually at that company. No Do- one's telling us any otherwise, so... <laughs> Do you know what I just thought of? And I haven't checked the numbers on this, but Iron Man, the reason the MCU worked so well is because Iron Man was so good. Right? And it did so well. But then the next movie that came out like a month later was The Incredible Hulk, which I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But that one, I think, underperformed. And it wasn't, it's not, you know, critics didn't love it like they loved Iron Man. And sure, it was kind of uh, universal. And Iron Man was kind of paramount at the time. But sure, it was kind of like that. But. I think like Warner Brothers or even freaking uh, Lucasfilm, like they would have been like, halt, halt, rethink it all. We got to rethink it all. <laughs> but Feige stood strong and he said, nope, Iron Man 2 is coming. We, we, they, and the thing is, he kind of lucked out with the Hulk in a way because of the universal deal where he couldn't really do an independent film with them. So he, kinda, he was like, nope, <clears throat> that's coming. And Captain America and Thor and suck it. We're doing them. I don't care. It's yeah, happening. Panic. 